Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. <laughs> this is Dee Dee and um, today we're going to be talking about something very very interesting. So we're going to talk about a few things today and um, like I mentioned on a lot of these videos, hopefully before like a lot of people start listening to these videos, I'll go ahead and get the timestamps done. Um, and then of course as I do this longer we'll get into like a kind of organized chaos going on um oh look that car behind me has the big old v on it interesting okay let me focus let me focus as y'all know i get out and i'm seeing all these license plates and all these things connected to everything and um it ends up uh being a lot of different things okay so let me focus so today we're going to be talking about something very very interesting um, and I'm really sad that I don't still have these notes. Oh my gosh, it's so crazy. I wish I still had these notes. Um, I don't still have the notes from this time and I wish I did because probably a lot of this stuff is going to connect. Um, but we're going to be talking about a series of dreams that I had in February of 2022. Um, and, uh, that was a very crazy time. So I'm going to talk about it very, very, uh, tenderly because there was a lot of stuff that ended up happening in February, 2022. Um, so, uh, okay. Oh, goodness grief. Okay. So I do remember that either on, okay. So I know that that one happened on the 13th. Okay, so I'm going to go back some to, like, February 8th or 9th. Okay, so wait, let's go back a little bit more. So I ended up having my Saturn return on February 3rd, 2022. So your Saturn return is when Saturn returns to the position that it was in when you were first born. Okay, so if you go to your natal chart and you look at you know, Saturn in whatever sign, um, you can then, well, I don't think you even have to do that now. You could just find a Saturn return calculator and just put in your birthday and it can tell you when your Saturn return is going to be. So anyways, the Saturn return is supposed to signify a time when you have, um, reached like your first Saturn return to me, in my opinion, is when you have reached um, your first uh, like milestone walking into adulthood, astrologically speaking. Um, so once you hit about 29, 30 is when you become like a spiritual adult, hopefully. Uh, I definitely think that we are behind on planet Earth, but that's a whole nother story. Um, but that's when you start to become like a spiritual adult. <laughs> 29 years, okay? So it's 29 and 31. Um, so yeah, my Saturn return was like two months after I turned 29. Um, and so, like I said, mine was on February 3rd, 2022, um, which is very interesting because I'm going to talk about this story when I talk about my fourth QHHT session. I've had a fourth one done. Um, and in my fourth QHHT session, <laughs> this was so wild. This is so wild. In my fourth QHHT session, which I had like a few months ago, like two months ago, maybe, um, I got some information about this uh, doctor that I had seen in childhood, the scientist I saw in childhood. Um, and he actually passed away on my Saturn return, which, uh, was pretty wild. So anyways, uh, that was my Saturn return. I was also pregnant with Phoenix at this time. Um, and I ended up giving birth, um, to him at the end of February. And so there was a lot of activity in the air in February, Okay, so I have a lot of Aquarius placements, so in general, um, February is a pretty active month. Um, but I remember that specifically on February 8th or the 9th, I can't remember which one, um, Ray and I were watching the new season of Raising Dion, 
and this was a time this was like such an interesting I'm starting to get chills even like thinking and talking about it so weird oh you know those type of chills that just oh just feels like it's crawling on your jaw like oh my gosh okay (laughs) oh my goodness okay Ooh. It was just such a really, really active spiritual time. It was a lot going on in all different type of ways. So anyways, we're watching Raising Dion, okay? The second season. We have been waiting for Raising Dion to come back out. Um, Anyways, during this time period, there was a lot going on. And I was also watching this TV show called uh, Man in the High Castle. Um, and there was an episode of Man in the High Castle, which I'm not going to go into the whole explanation of what Man in the High High Castle is, but the reason I was watching it is because in my third QHHT, well, my second and third ones, there was a lot of stuff that came out about Germany. Um, and I have personal connections to Germany, so it wasn't very surprising in that sense, but what I found out in the QHHT session, look, there's like this loud ringing that I'm hearing in my ears right now. Okay, calm it down. Okay. (laughs) Yeah, it's time to calm it down because then weird stuff starts happening when they don't really want you to really talk about something and stuff. And I'm not in the mood for any weird stuff right now. This is my truth. Okay. (laughs) So anyways, there's a lot of stuff um, that I found in these QHHT sessions about Germany and all different type of stuff, right? And so anyways, um, the person who did my third session recommended for me to watch Band in the High Castle. Because it talks about a parallel reality um, where the Germans won the war. Um, And there is this whole thing where um, pretty much they are after people who have access to these certain tapes that are going around that show the reality that we know, which is the reality where the Germans did not win the war. And they are giving people hope to, like, rebel against the you know society that is now created with Germany and uh Japan and so the person who is supposed to have access to these tapes or something like that is this guy who goes by the alias of the man in the high castle okay now during this time period there's a specific episode that I had seen um either the day before or earlier that day which was wild where They are showing the Japanese consulate getting blown up and a whole lot of people dying. And there is a very, very quick, oh my gosh, that says BWA on the back of that car. It says Georgia BWA. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Okay. (laughs) Because I just saw, I just heard someone talking in a video about Georgia and like some crazy stuff going on on Stone Mountain. And I used to live in Stone Mountain for a second. And it's just a lot going on. It's a lot going on. Anyways, okay. Um, okay, let me focus my brain because there's a lot going on. I could talk uh, the BWA connection, something that I got to talk about at another time because that's really intense. Um, okay, let me refocus. <laughs> Okay, so anyways, there's a part in this Man in the High Castle series where the Japanese consulate is being blown up, okay? And it's a very, um, I don't, nostalgic is not the word. It's a very, uh, serene is not really the word. Um, um, uh, it's a very slowed down time in the series where they slow down the uh time of how this Japanese consulate is being blown up and people are being hurt and it shows this moment where people who are being oppressed have gotten to such a point of desperation of freeing themselves that they are no longer worried about the safety of innocent people. And it is a very strange, um, marketed time of seeing that, uh, well, this is a part of it. So during this slowdown in the series where the Japanese consul is being blown up, you see a very quick, 
and you would miss it if you don't know what this symbol represents. But there is a moment where a piece of one of the gates on the Japanese consulate is blown up and is flying in the air. And on that gate, you see the Sankofa symbol. Now, if you have not heard of the Sankofa symbol, um, you can look up Sankofa symbol. Sometimes it's represented by a type of swan or bird that is um, turning its neck backwards towards its back. Um, And then sometimes it's also depicted as an upside down heart. Now, this specific symbol is seen on a lot of um, iron gates. Specifically, I've seen a lot of them in New Orleans growing up, and I never knew that that was the Sankofa symbol. Um, but Sankofa is a ideology in West African beliefs, I believe. I believe it's West African um, that talk about, in my opinion, uh, I haven't talked to a West African person about it, but in my opinion, what I got from it um, is that it talks about the idea that uh, (laughs) that pretty much you can move forward, but you're always going to have to turn around and trace your steps. And if you have not built the foundation correctly, you're going to have to go back and do it again. And so to me, it's kind of like the overall ideology behind why people reincarnate is that you can't truly move forward until your foundation is solid so that includes atonement and all different type of stuff so in the context of this german uh this uh japanese consulate being blown up when you see the sankofa symbol um it is a representation that even if it wasn't a nuclear bomb that was going to happen to japan which we do see a nuclear explosion um there is definitely going to be something bad that happened to Japan. And that had something to do with something karmically as far as maybe even helping the Germans or, you know, I wasn't really following the series for the history of it. I was actually really paying attention to like the very spiritual intertwined relationship um, that one of the heads of the Japanese consulate is following. So, I don't really know the his the historical things to really go into the nitty gritty of it because that's not really what I focus on. Um, but anyways, you see the Sankofa symbol, okay? So how that relates to Dion is that on this particular day, we were watching the episode of Dion that is called Sankofa, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm saying that because I was like, what? When I saw the title of it was Sankofa, I was like, what? Absolutely what? So anyways, during this episode, during this episode of Raising Dion, he has his little costume on and it has MM on it. Okay. So I remember being like, what does the MM stand for? I'm like, I guess he's a superhero. I don't know if they ever said what MM standing for. But anyways, I was really focused on that. And then Ray got a phone call and it was something important. So we paused it. And so he talked on the phone for a second while I was trying to figure out what the MM was about. Now, as I was trying to figure out what the MM was about, I got distracted on YouTube, okay? This was, like, during, like, a a little brief phone break while we are watching this episode, okay? Now, I got distracted. I got on YouTube, and I was listening to, like, a -a pick-a-card reading, and I did, like, a little time stamp in this reading, and um, this woman started talking about, she was like, um, you should close your eyes right now because there's a message for you. I kid you not. I kid you not. Stuff like this happens to me all the time. So I was like, oh, okay. So I guess this was like a compatible time where Ray needed to handle some business and I needed to get some information. Um, and then it'll probably be relevant to what's going on with this TV show with the rest of what we watch. So I was like, okay, cool. So I briefly closed my eyes. And when I closed my eyes, there was a guy that I watch on YouTube who was like flying at me in this vision. And he was like, it's time for you to remember the Death Star. Um, And there's a woman I was um, friends with at the time. And he was like, you and her are connected to the Death Star. And I was like, okay. And he was like, you need to remember M-U-L-G-E. Mulge. I think that's how it's pronounced, Mulge. 
Um, and I was like, oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> and he was like, you need to remember this. And then he told me a word and it was Kadistu or Kadistu, Kadistu, K-A-D-I-S-T-U. Now, I had heard something similar of that, like Kadesha, which I think that Kadesh, Kadesha, Kadistu, Kadistu. Um, I'm pretty sure they're all related to each other. And so I was like, okay, cool. So I just wrote it down. I was like, okay, cool. Uh, the Death Star, which I feel like I heard about that in Star Wars or something. And then this Mulgate. And then he said, this is connected to the Anunnaki's. And I was like, oh, wonderful. You know, oh, great. Because, of course, you know, in, <laughs> in like the spiritual communities, the Anunnaki's and stuff, like, definitely are not anybody's a favorite right so I'm like oh, okay cool um so then we start watching the video and everything like that and it comes to an end and we're like okay cool it's time to go to sleep right because we're trying to <laughs> like have our little date night and stuff but then it's time to get the kids ready for school in the morning so we don't want to be up too late watching too much of Raising Dion so like, okay cool like let's go to sleep that episode was also I believe also episode nine so it was also it was season two episode nine I believe which 29 is um is my number I always see 29 um and even my um so I'm a Virgo rising and it is uh 15 degrees 29 minutes six twenty nine. Um, so it could have been February 9th because that would make sense about 29 could have been but anyway so I'm like okay cool so I lay down because at that time I was laying on the couch I'm like big pregnant and for whatever reason the couch was more comfortable than the bed okay so I'm laying on the bed and I am thinking about this word mulge or mulch but I feel like it's mulge I'm thinking about this word and I'm thinking about the Death Star and I'm just kind of, you know, just kind of pondering on it, I guess. Maybe hoping to get some information from it. I don't know. But I'm just kind of thinking and pondering on it. Now, this is crazy. The next thing I know, so my eyes are closed and I am under the blanket. I'm getting ready, you know, before I go to bed because my dreams can get wild. I like to try to set some type of intention. It's very rare that I just like go into sleep without some type of thought right because then you end up in all type of situations so <laughs> so I usually have a wind down period as I'm going to sleep where I'm just kind of either kind of going over the day or I try to focus on one word or a concept or something and sometimes I dream about what I'm thinking about but sometimes I still get thrown into probably different people's dreams and stuff like that as well anyway so as I'm thinking about this concept I kid you not as I'm thinking about this concept I literally sense someone sit down at my feet I can feel their butt sitting on the cushion by my feet and I knew it wasn't Ray and I knew it wasn't the kids because this was like a grown man I could tell by the energy and uh, how they sat down on the couch that this was a grown person this is not a small child and we don't have any big children at this time especially um and I knew it wasn't Ray and I was like too terrified to <laughs> I was too terrified to open my <laughs> to open my eyes I was like who in the world is that? So I freaked out for like five seconds, but then I've I've had experiences like this. So I was like, okay, dude, it's cool. Clearly somebody has something to say. I don't feel any weird, strange, you know, malevolent kind of vibes or whatever. And so what I did was like, well, I was thinking about this, you know, freaking out. I was like, okay, calm down, Didi. Like just, it's going to be fine. Obviously, there's a spirit around and they have some type of message. They're trying, they want to get my attention to let me know that they have something to say. So I'm like, okay, cool. So I telepathically said this and I didn't know if the person was going to hear anything like that. But I just said out loud in my head, I was like, hi. <laughs> I'm like, hi, you must have something to talk about. That's what I'm saying in my head. Okay. 
And I'm just hoping they telepathically can hear me because I did not want to open my eyes. So I'm like, hey, looks like you have something to say. Um, I'd really appreciate if you come and talk to me in the dream world. That's what I said. The next thing I know, I kind of drifted off to sleep. Now, as I was drifting off to sleep, I don't know if I like, you know, uh, that look. <laughs> the tablet agrees, okay? <laughs> as I'm drifting off to sleep, I was not really expecting um, any type of communication, which is kind of funny because obviously right so anyways I'm falling asleep and the next thing I know I kind of seamlessly okay so this is not like I went to sleep and then I woke up in a dream this is like a seamless transition from me laying down relaxing to now me being awake in a void type of space you know the trusty dusty void I end up in the void space a lot um honestly especially when there's something interdimensional going on um and so anyway so um so I'm in this void space and I see that there is some type of interrogation situation going on okay so uh my mom said okay how is my tv doing this I flipped it on haven't switched to a source yet went to the kitchen came back it is flipping through photos as a screensaver how is my tv connect to my phone these are pics on my phone what how's that happening on the cb oh look at little nene oh my goodness she's so cute (laughs) wow that was from november 7th in like 2016 wow look at that girl okay my mom is like texting me about spiritual phenomenon going on in her house right now (laughs) Okay, anyways, that's not even the point. Okay, let me let me not get too lost because I have to go in a little bit. Okay, so anyways, there's an interrogation going on right now, okay? And I am like an energy in the back of the room observing this interrogation that's going on. So I can see these two white guys. They're dressed up like, you know, lawyers, not even like cops. Like I, I've seen like on First 48 a couple of times like interrogation rooms and they're still kind of wearing like normal clothes but these guys were like wearing professional black jackets you know blazers like professional looking guys pants you know dress shoes the whole nine and they're doing the interrogation so I'm like oh we must be in like a a federal kind of interrogation and so I see them um so they can't see me but I am like behind them observing what's going on okay and they I kid you not they are interrogating this black shadow entity I I promise you he's sitting in a chair and they are interrogating him and they're like what are you doing here okay so let me try to explain this this energy had a masculine silhouette that's what I would say it had some type of form or shape to it but this was not a male human being okay but it had a masculine shape or form to it okay um and so he was sitting in the chair and this this guy is he i'm gonna call him a guy but he was not human i'm gonna call him a guy though this guy was massive massive at least like i don't know 10 12 feet tall or something like that he was tower overing them sitting down okay so they're trying like the good cop bad cop thing like why are you here what are you doing i'm like like this interrogation is really just like a circus because how big this guy is and everything like that like he's here because he wants to be like you know what i'm saying like be for real like be serious like if he wanted to walk out right now he definitely could and so anyways he was being quiet and he was looking at me so he could see me so i'm like oh this is interesting i'm like okay so I knew that he was answering their questions, but he was also giving me answers too. So that's when it clicked and I was like, oh, this must be the energy that was sitting at my feet was this energy. And so um, they're like, who are you and what do you want? And he said it very calmly and very clearly and very plainly. He was like, I am Mothman and I am an interdimensional 
creature, he specifically said creature, I'm an interdimensional creature that stitches together timelines. Um, and it was like, uh, specifically what he was implying was almost like final destination and stuff like that. Like he comes in and he was a part of a race of interdimensional creatures that stitch together timelines. So it wasn't just him. It wasn't just one Mothman. Okay. Um, it's like an interdimensional race of bird like creatures. Okay. That's a whole nother situation. I'm gonna get to that in a minute. Okay. Um, so basically it's like when people have cheated death or, you know, um, you know, alive and technically they like shouldn't be, then these are the people that come in and unfortunately fix the timeline. Okay. Um, so they're like some type of time cop kind of situation going on and that's what they do. That's what they do. And so when he said that, the guys started looking at each other and they were baffled. Um, they were baffled and not because he wasn't being clear because he was very clear with what he said. Um, but I don't think that they really thought that Mothman was a thing and that there was some type of time cop force or something like that. So I'm like, oh, OK, interesting. I, I mean, I guess that makes sense. Um, and so they kind of looked at each other and then they asked him again, they're like, who are you and what, and what do you want? And he said the same exact thing to them. Now, the second time he was talking to me telepathically, telling them, but also talking to me telepathically. And he showed me all these other different versions of himself that he also takes on. So he is also the Thunderbird. He is also Garuda. He is also, um, some people might see him as an angelic being. I'm not exactly sure which one. I can't remember which one. But he was showing me all these other forms that he takes. And so in the Mothman form, I'm starting to get really congested talking about this. I cannot stand when that happens. It is so irritating. Like, why? Um... But when he takes on the Mothman form, it is a harbinger. Oh, my gosh. The lights outside just came on. Not all of them, either. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I actually like when that happens because it's, like, a really good validation of, like, yeah, this is this is exactly what you should be doing and talking about right now. And it's 519, and I just saw a car, like, a few minutes ago pass with 519 on it. So if you are seeing 519, then know that that is connected into what I'm talking about right now. And maybe you're getting a visit, hopefully in a positive way, because I don't I don't think it's always negative. Um, but in this version, in this form of the Mothman, um, this is a harbinger of there's some type of timeline stitching event that's about to happen okay so um you know in his garuda form he is coming as a, a messenger of something else in his um thunderbird form he is coming in and that's what i was saying about birdmen um he is coming in the form of something else um and i even saw someone that connected uh mothman and uh stuff like that also to the headless horseman which is a whole nother story about crom crouch <laughs> the crouching darkness it's a whole nother whole nother topic whole nother situation um but anyways he was letting me know about his other forms and this also will say race i guess of or species, I guess, of supernatural entities that take on the form of specific creatures in order to stitch together timelines, okay? Which is interesting because now I'm thinking about Loki, and I'm not going to give away too much if you haven't watched Loki, but um, Loki is all about stitching together the main timeline um, and uh, pruning branches of the tree that they feel like shouldn't exist so this is very interesting because that's the first thing i'm thinking of now that i have seen loki 
uh, right? And when we're talking about pruning the branches, we're talking about trees, tree branches, branches of trees, um, which trees are associated to bloodlines, <laughs> certain families and offspring in a bloodline. Um, so, so anyways, and then that's when I realized that whatever the reason Dion MM was for me, it was standing for dun, da, 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 Mothman. Um, now the interesting, the other interesting thing about that was, um, when I woke up, <clears throat> when I woke up, I remember, cause at that moment, when he was telling them that his name was Mothman, I was like, is that a superhero? Or <laughs> when it's 527. <laughs> I was like, is that a superhero? Like, what is, who is Mothman? Like, I'm like, is that a Marvel character, DC character? Like, I don't think I've heard of Mothman. Um, but when I woke up, I had like a very, very faint, oh, look, this guy has a 38 on his, on his back. Interesting. Um, when I woke up, though, um, I remember that, um, like, back in 2020, uh, one of my friends was talking to me about Mothman. And I remember she was talking to me probably about, like, a week straight about Mothman. Um, and I just couldn't really, like, I could comprehend it. But, you know, sometimes when things are just, like, not sticking, it just was not sticking for me. I just, like, it just couldn't, just, it just wasn't really hitting you know what I'm saying like I just couldn't really I was just like okay <clears throat> so when I came out of that dream the same thing with like this Al <clears throat> um okay same thing with this like Al Qadir person um she had told me about Al Qadir before I had an experience with Al Qadir um oh like SB 71 interesting um she had told me about about Al Qadir, but at the moment she was telling me about it, I just couldn't really get it. And so, anyways, when I finally had this experience with Mothman energy, I was like, oh, okay. Um, that's probably why I couldn't really comprehend it because they wanted me to have some type of, you know, um, uh, some type of, you know, that I had heard of it. But they didn't want me to have any preconceived notions about it before I actually had an experience with it. That's that's my belief system. And it was also very interesting because during that time period before this, um, there was this uh, person that I knew at that time um, who actually lived on uh, lived near a park called Thunderbird Park. Um, and maybe even the, the neighborhood might have been connected to Thunderbird. Um, and then when I first got to, when I first got to Arizona, there was, um, a tarot place that I reached out to, uh, to do readings at, and her shop was also on Thunderbird Park. So it was very interesting to see that there was a sinistry that was going on before I even knew what a Thunderbird was or what it was connected to. Um, and so that was very interesting. And then it kind of segued into, right, because a Thunderbird is a harbinger of usually something unfortunate that's going to happen. And so um, so that was on either the 8th or the 9th, but I bet money it was the 9th. Um, and so then I ended up having a dream on February 12th going into the 13th. And on this day, and um, I'm not going to talk about everything that happened on this day because it's a, it's a very traumatic event um, that happened to... Uh, some of the people that we care about. So I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. Um, but I did have this dream where I was back in Louisiana. So by this time, of course, in 2020, we were in Phoenix. So we had moved from Louisiana. Okay. We were in Louisiana and we were in the bayou. I was in the bayou. It wasn't me ever. It was just me. 
So in this dream, I did wake up and I was literally on one of those speed bayou boats. And I remember thinking, because the boat was driving itself. I was not driving the boat. The boat knew exactly where to go. It was almost like the boat was like enchanted. That's what I believe it was. I believe that it was enchanted to find me and to bring me somewhere. Okay. And so um, I remember thinking, I was like, oh my gosh, nobody is driving this boat. And I was like, look, I'm from Louisiana, but I have never been to the bayou. So I literally was telling the boat, I was like, if you are expecting me to know where we're going, like we are in deep trouble. And I was like, and I know that these are crocodile infested waters and I'm not trying to be crocodile food. (laughs) And so I just remember being like, where are we going? And I hope this boat knows where it's going. Well, it didn't know where we're going because eventually um, we stopped at this place And the best way I can describe it is like it was the most mini island marsh that I can think of. It was like a little mini island, but made of swamp marsh. Um, Like swamp has this very specific type of grass that grows there. I wonder if it has a specific name. I don't actually know what the name is. Let me see. Um, let me see if I'm like tall yeah 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 what's the swamp grass called okay I mean it's saying swamp grass but but there's also like a very specific plant that was growing on this grass too um It was like a kind of white willowy kind of looking grass. Yeah, like tall swamp grass, common reed. Maybe it's these common reeds. Oh, oh, these things. This is what it was. Okay, what is this called? Uh, So this is called Outside Pride. Oh, that's the name of the store. Eranthus Ravenae Plume. Plume. What is it commonly called? <laughs> Plume grass has tall arching stems, make this one of the largest and most popular ornamental grasses, also known as Ravenay grass and hardy pampas grass. Okay, so it was pretty much full of this type of thing. So if you look up Ravenay, R A V. E N N A E Ravene grass. This is what it looked like. Okay. Um. So, anyways, uh, the boat like stops and I get off and it goes away. So I'm like, oh, it must be. It must have been an enchanted boat, I guess, which is very wild. So, anyways, I get on this grass. I get on this marshland, and there is this huge giant Celtic farmer. I always call him a Celtic farmer. Um. But he also would like look, but I don't know because he didn't necessarily like, even though he had like red hair and stuff, um, like he had fiery red hair, fiery beard, you know, like a lumberjack kind of man with the overalls and the big old boots and stuff. Like, um, but I just kept thinking, like, who is this Irish farmer here? And he was humongous. And he actually knew how to shrink himself down to my size, which I thought was very interesting. Um, And so anyways, he was like working in these marshes. And I was like, what are you doing? So I realized that he's the one that enchanted the boat to bring me there. So he was the one who had like called me to come to this island. And I had no clue who this guy was. And so I was like, what are you doing here? And he was like, come sit down here with me. Like, come kneel down here with me. So he was kneeling down in the grass doing something. And so I'm like, what are you doing? He was like, come here. I'm about to teach you something. And so I'm like, oh, okay, cool, I guess. So the next thing I know when I kneeled next to him, I started seeing through the dimension. And I started to see that he actually was working in somebody's foot. Child, I don't know. It was this humongous, giant foot. And it was connected to a person, but I don't know how to describe it. You had to, like, look into the dimension, and you had to look really up to even see the whole body of this being. 
it was a huge being and if I were to describe this being honestly the like he reminded me of like an older kind of semi-bald Jewish man with glasses he looked like he would be like a Jewish librarian not librarian but like a Jewish scholar or something I guess um maybe like a rabbi or something but he wasn't in traditional Jewish rabbi attire though um, he looked more like a corporate person, like a lawyer or something like that. I don't know, but he was working in this guy's big toe. That's what I remember. And um, what I saw was that he was he was grabbing from this interdimensional being's big toe a small alligator head. And when I saw him messing with the alligator head in this guy's big toe, I was like, why are you doing that? And he was like, I'm taking away his protection. Um, his time has come where his protection has run up. And I remember when he said that, I had like the biggest lump in my chest because I knew that that meant something bad for this giant. And so I was like, why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? I'm like, leave it alone. And he was like, these are some of the natural orders. And when the time is up, the time is up. So he took this alligator head out and we left. And I just felt so bad as we were leaving. And so when I woke up, um, now I don't know where Balshazar, Balthazar, you know, that Magi, because I remember that name popped up too. Um, But I can't remember where that dream was before and like what it was significant to but I feel like Balthazar was like a father figure or something to me or something like that so anyways it it sent such an uncomfortable feeling in my spirit that I actually woke up and I actually called back to New Orleans to call like I call like two apothecaries and like a hoodoo shop And I was like, what does an alligator head represent? And all of them told me that alligator heads are used um, in traditional hoodoo practices, maybe even voodoo practices. I actually can't remember which one they said because I called different places. Um, But pretty much the overall consensus with that alligator heads are used to guard your front door, to guard your house. They are protection amulets. And so removing it could be a symbol of removing someone's luck, someone's grace. And I was like, oh, my goodness. And then um, later on that day, we found out that something very tragic had happened. Um, And so I remember thinking, like, what in the world is going on right now? There is something very interesting going on, right? Because I had seen the Mothman already. And I was like, what is that? Like, what is coming? And then now I'm seeing this, like, Celtic farmer take, remove somebody's protection. And then something did happen. And, um, and it was very, very, very tragic. And I know that the Bal, 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 Balzar, Balthazar, Balthazar, something like that was saying let me see who that is because I know that person's in the bible but I kind of forgot the significance of it I think it was connected to Nebuchadnezzar in some type of way I think <clears throat> yeah Saint Balthazar or Bal- Balthazar was according to tradition one of the biblical magi along with Casper. Oh, interesting. And Mal Malshor Malshir, who visited the infant Jesus after his birth. Balthazar is traditionally referred to as a as the king of Macedonia and gave the gift of myrrh to Jesus. And in Constantine, he is considered a demon. Okay. Um, Okay. 
meaning so Balthazar interesting Balthazar meaning Bell protected the king interesting because I was actually just reading that Malge was one of the um triple gods of the I think they're considered Chaldean pantheon I mean Babylonian but I think they also exist in Chaldean magic too if I'm not mistaken um and it was Anu, Ia, and Malge um and he was Bel um before he was replaced um so I didn't actually know that very interesting yeah actually let me just read that at the head of the divine hierarchy still stood the old triad of Anu, Mulge, and Ea. Mulge's name, however, was changed to Bel, but since Murdoch, ooh, <laughs> Murdoch, Murdoch, it must be Murdoch, okay, was also known as Bel, he fell more and more into the background especially after the rise of Babylon, of which Murdoch was the patron deity. At Nippur, now Nefer, alone, he continued to be worshipped down into late times. His consort was Bilat, or Beltis, the great lady, who eventually came to be regarded as the wife of Murdoch, rather than of the other Bel. Like Anu and Ea, Bel was the offspring of Sar and Kassar, the upper and lower firmaments. And so it says, one of the bas reliefs from Nineveh, now in the British Museum, represents him as pursuing with his curved sword, oh, like a sigmatar, or thunderbolt, the demon Tiamat, the personification of chaos and anarchy, who is depicted with claws, tails, and horns. As we've already seen, he was commonly addressed as Bell or Lord, and so gradu- and so came gradually to supplant the older Bell or Malge. Among the planets, his star was Jupiter, his wife was Zarparnet, and Zerat Panitu, in whom some scholars have seen the Sakoth Benoth of two kings. Very interesting. Yeah, and some of Malge's incantations and works of sorcery can be found in Chaldean magic. Its origin and development by Francois Lenormand. Oh, like the Lenormand deck. Very interesting. So let me see if there is a Malge. I'm going to have to go back to that. Um, Connect it to... I mean, I know he's going to about the czar because they just said bell. So I'm not sure if that's which bell it is. Okay. Um, so anyways, I will go back and, and I'll post like any links and stuff that I find. Um, eventually, it's getting late. We're going to have to go pick up the kids. Oh, Lord, that's the wrong thing. That I, <laughs> I'm going to have to go and pick up the kids and stuff like that. Um, so anyways, you guys, um, that was my story about Mothman and Mulge. Um, and I will be back later on this week, um, talking about some more things. So make sure that you go ahead and do all the fun things that we do here on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe, share all those fun things. Um, and then I also uh, will have some posts, some links and stuff like that posted in the description box. Um, have you on the commenting? Make sure that you share it with a friend. Okay. All right, friends. Bye.